Hello and welcome back to this new video of mine and Bookmas Day 4 if I'm not mistaken. Today we will talk about the new releases coming in the first half, so in the first two quarters. Yeah, two quarters make up one half. Math genius right over here. We're gonna talk about the new releases that are coming the first half of 2025. I'm gonna tell you right up front, I am not a girly that likes to read a lot of thrillers or something, so you're mostly gonna get romances, a few continuation of series, but I'm not gonna go too much into depth of these. Of course, you're gonna get all the dates as well of when the books will be released. And we're also gonna talk about some fantasy. So these are the things we will cover today. I hope this is interesting and intriguing to you. I made a similar video over a year ago for 2024. If you like this, then maybe in half a year I will do the one for the rest of the year. Let me know. And I would say let's get right into this video. Starting off with the first week of January, on the 7th of January, The Starlight Air by Emily Howard is gonna come out. I'm looking down all the time because I have my laptop here and I don't want to mess up the information I'm giving you. So let's quickly read the synopsis together. When the gold dusted court invitation arrives at Soraya Zab's fort, she believes it's a joke. Nobles might seek her skills as a bladesmith. One of few who can imbue her work with precious jadoo. Jadoo? What is that? Never heard of that word before. The last source of magic in the realm. But she has no qualifications as a potential bride for the crown prince. Still, the invitation is a chance at adventure and the means to finally visit the capital city her late mother loved. But what awaits her in Kaldari, Kaldari is nothing she could have imagined and fraught with danger. It's not the crown prince, but his impossibly handsome, illegitimate half-brother Roshan who captures her interest and her ire. The invitation isn't a quest to find a suitable bride, but a veiled hunt for the Star Keeper, a girl rumored to hold the magic of the stars in her blood. Ooh, okay. And across the city, unrest is brewing between the noble houses and the rebel mili militia. I'm sorry if I pronounce this wrong. Um, there are a few words that I don't know in here. Okay. When the rebels attack, Soraya and Roshan find themselves on the run, trying to deny their simmering attraction and the knowledge that Soraya herself might be the Star Keeper. But Roshan is guarding secrets of his own, and with no control over the powers stirring within her, Soraya has drawn her attention of a dark god, an immortal whose interest might be the biggest threat of all. So it sounds very, very interesting. Sounds like a very intriguing romanticy, in my opinion. I feel like we're gonna get a lot of romance in there. I don't know, but this sounded very intriguing to me. And also on the same day is another romanticy coming out called Immortal by Su Lin Tan. A young ruler must forge a delicate alliance with the enigmatic god of war to protect her kingdom in the stunning romantic fantasy filled with dangerous secrets, forbidden magic and passion. That sounds amazing. So she's an heir to the mortal crown and as we already heard then she's gonna forge an alliance with the god of war. Doesn't mean she's gonna fall in love with him. Let me look this up. Okay, we don't know who she's falling for, but I think it might be a god or something. It sounds really, really interesting. Then on the 14th, we have the new release Let's Call It Truce by Amy Buchanan. Buchanan? Don't know. Which is a sexy contemporary romance about second chances at life and love. Bursting with humor and a touch of angst from debut author Amy Buchanan. Our female main character's husband dies unexpectedly, so she needs to pick up her life and move on with the grief and everything and then she has a feud with a co-worker and i guess they're gonna have a little romance going on after that it sounds interesting it's a little bit of a different promise i don't know if i'll read it right away because yeah grieving is not a topic i'm necessarily i wouldn't say not interested in but i would say it's difficult sometimes to handle especially because i like to read to escape reality sometimes right so those heavy topics are sometimes not for me but i still think it's a very interesting release and it's her debut novel so if you're interested in it please check it out and support her then we have the really dead wives of new jersey also coming out on the 14th and this is a thriller actually i think but it just sounded interesting so what it sounds like to me is that it's a thriller and for me it sounds like it's inspired by the real housewives of Beverly Hills or something, you know? Like this is I think the entire concept and we're gonna get a lot of secrets that are being revealed and rivalries that will resurface. I don't know, it sounds like a lot of drama. I've not heard anyone talk about this book before, but as I said, I think it just sounds very interesting and this is maybe a thriller that I would consider picking up because it sounds a bit more like a drama than only a thriller and like a lot of blood and gore or suspense. Oh, suspense, I wouldn't say that that's not in there, but you know what I mean. You're picking up what I'm putting down, right? Like, this is, this is intriguing. <laughs> 
A release that I'm equally as excited about as also frightened about is Onyx Storm, which is gonna come out on the 21st of January. So this is the third installment in the Fourth Ring series, so the Empyrean series. I am excited to continue the series as of right now, but if I don't enjoy the third one, because I did not like Iron Flame at all, I'm gonna try reading Onyx Storm, and if I don't like Onyx Storm, I'm gonna contemplate to end the series and keep it at that, you know? This is my last straw. <laughs> I loved Fourth Ring, I think it was really good, so this is like a romanticy or mainly fantasy with a few romance aspects about dragon riders, but we also have like a lot of other professions in here that are really interesting, so this is a book that I'm definitely curious about. A lot of politics were being discussed in the last one and there were a lot of plot holes, so I'm not entirely sure how this is gonna be wrapped up now, but I'm intrigued. And also coming out on the 21st of January is the Rivals, which is a Rivals to Lovers with an academic twist. So we're having enemies to lovers, but in academia. And there have been lifelong academic rivals and now they're even going to the same college. So to me, this is giving cozy vibes, you know? Cozy rom-com, I think this can be very, very interesting. With rom-coms, it's also easier for me to put them into one sentence or two sentences, by the way, if it's a romanticy or if it's a fantasy. I'm gonna go more into depth and I'm gonna give you the entire plot because I have no clue as to how to wrap this up for you so that it makes sense and that you get the proper summary of this. That's why I'm sometimes reading it completely or sometimes just giving you little snippets. The last book that's coming out in January, at least that's on my list right now, because yeah, this is my list, this is personally accumulated, like for you there might be other books that you are interested in coming up this year, next year, which is already in a few weeks, so scary stuff, really intimidated by that. Okay, never mind. So to me it before it said on the 28th of January this book would come out, now on Amazon it says the 1st of February, so I'm a bit confused, I think Goodreads messed me up a little, so we're gonna say this already in February now. <laughs> So on the 1st of February, Out of the Woods by Hannah Bonham Young is gonna come out. And this is about a couple that is estranged and is not really having the best time anymore as they used to. And in order to find their way back to one another, they are gonna go onto a week-long trip into the wilderness. So yeah, they wanna reconnect and rekindle their love, basically. The same author also wrote Out on Limp, which is a really famous and popular book talk book as well, as far as I'm concerned. I think this sounds really heartfelt and very emotional and also a bit more of a different storyline than what we usually have. Because usually we follow people that just fall in love in the same book that we're reading it in, but they already loved each other and now they need to rekindle their marriage. And I think that's a really interesting premise and that sounds very honest and real. <laughs> then on the fourth February. Tessa Bailey is coming out with a new book called Dream Girl Drama. I have actually no clue what this is about. I think, yeah, it says spicy sports rom-com. And I think the first one in the series was the one with the golfer, but I'm not entirely sure. So he's a professional hockey player and she is the manic pixie dream girl he just can't seem to forget. Oh, oh, okay, that's a twist. That takes a turn when the pair realizes that their parents are engaged. That's a really interesting premise. I think that could be fun. And they've already kissed before, so, so the attraction is already there, but now the parents are engaged, which creates a whole new different level to it. Okay, that's a really interesting premise, and Tessa Bailey writes really fast and engaging books. They're very funny as well, so I don't hate Tessa Bailey's writing style. For me personally, these have not been books that have been stuck with me for the rest of my life, but I really enjoyed the vibe of them, so I'm really contemplating picking this one up. Another book coming out on the 4th, also by a very popular author, is Deep End by Ellie Hazelwood. This is about a competitive diver and an ace swimmer, and they jump into forbidden waters in a steamy college romance. Completely different angle that she's taking again. For me, that's a really interesting premise, because Ellie Hazelwood used to write STEM romances, then she started to go a bit into Check and Mate, which was more about chess and also like a different type of sport. And then she suddenly wrote Bright and Not In Love was about a CEO. And now we have Deep End, which is sports romance. So I feel like she's kind of straying away from that stigma that she's just a STEM romance author because she had a lot of success with those. But as far as I'm concerned, her other books also had a lot of success. I read Check and Mate last year, really enjoyed it. And I think, yeah, this can be promising. I'm not entirely sure how this is gonna turn out, of course, but I think she's actually pretty good in every genre she writes because Bright was also like werewolf and vampire situation, but also make it comedy-esque. Very interesting. So I think I'm really curious to see how she's gonna evolve in the upcoming few years and what type of books she's gonna continue to write. 
And then the last book coming out on the 4th is The Rose Bargain. So what intrigued me about this is because it said it's for fans of Bridgerton, The Selection and The Cruel Prince. Well, I loved all three of those. <laughs> so I feel like this sounds very interesting. This is set in the past, which is 1848 in London actually. And it's also with Faye. Wow, this is so complex. I'm gonna read this to you because I am confused. Okay, London 8048. For 400 years, England has been under the control of an immortal fake queen who tricked her way onto the throne. To maintain an illusion of benevolence, Queen Moor grants each of her subjects one opportunity to bargain for their deepest desire. As Ivy Benton prepares to make her debut, she knows that not even a deal with the queen could fix what has gone wrong. Her family's social standing is in its shambles, her sister is a shadow of her former self, and Ivy's marriage prospects are non-existent. So when the Queen announces a competition for Prince Bram's hand, Ivy is the first to sign her name in blood. What a bargain can fix, a crown certainly could. Ivy soon finds herself a surprising front runner, with the help of an unexpected ally. Prince Bram's brother, the rakish Prince Emmet, who promises to help Ivy win his brother's heart for a price. Oh, okay. But as the season sweeps Ivy away, with glittering balls veiling the Queen's increasingly vicious trails, Ivy realizes there is more at stake than just a wedding, because all fairy bargains come with a cost, and Ivy may have discovered hers too late. This sounds so 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 good. I'm stunned. Too stunned to speak. So this is really giving Bridgerton but make it fantasy. <laughs> Iconic. So this I'm really curious about. Yeah, also let me know which of these books you're most interested in. Like if any of these that I'm talking about today sparked your interest, let me know in the comments down below. I'm as always very curious to hear from you. Next up coming out on the 6th is The Beast We Bury, which is a slow burn romanticy. We have a lot of romanticy today. I think this is really, as we already saw last year and this year, it's really a genre that's coming up more and I love to see that. Mansella, heir to the throne, emerged from the mysterious broken citadel with a strange and violent magic. She can summon an army of animals, but only by killing them first. Okay, okay, so that makes sense. The beasts we bury. Okay. Silver is a charming thief who plans to manipulate Mansella in order to pull off a once in a lifetime heast. When our father decides that man should kill a human in order to create an unbeatable spirit army, Mans realizes how much of a pawn she is in his world. As the deception and bloodshed continue to mount, Mans and Silver find themselves forced to make choices that will change the realm forever. So we don't see a lot of romance right now in this, but we were being promised a romanticy, so I guess the two of them are gonna end up together. And there are enemies to lovers apparently. I don't think they hate each other though, like it doesn't seem like they hate each other, it's more like enemies from outside forces, you know, but it sounds very intriguing and interesting. Coming out one day later is My Dark Prince, written by Parker S. Huntington and L.J. Shen, which is this third installment in the Dark Prince Road. So I read do I have it here? No, I don't have it here right now. I read the second one, which is My Dark Desire, and they are all inspired by fairy tale reimaginings. So the first one is My Dark Romeo, then we have My Dark Desire. My Dark Romeo is obviously based on Romeo and Juliet. The My Dark Desire was a reimagining of Cinderella. Very, very dark though. So this dark romance. And then we have the third installment, and I actually have no clue what this one is about, because we don't have a summary yet. But I'm curious about this one because I love the writing style from the two of them. I think it was a really engaging and fun book to read. So I'm not appalled to reading the third one. I haven't read My Dark Romeo yet. They're kind of interconnected, but it's also fine. Another book I was really curious about was First Time Caller, which comes out on the 11th it said for me at first, but now it says 13th of February. I'm gonna say 13th because that's what Amazon says, but Goodreads said 11th at first. This is a love story inspired by Sleepless in Seattle, which I recently watched and really enjoyed. And it's about a radio host and a woman who is asking for dating advice and the two of them are then gonna fall in love. That's a cute premise, I think. Also, what was supposed to come out on the 11th and now it says it's coming out on the 13th, so we're gonna stick to the 13th again, is The Launch Date, which is a enemies to lovers workplace rom-com. So they are basically developing a dating app and in order to test it before they need to go on certain dates and I think that's when they start to fall in love with each other. It's giving the hating game because I don't think they are big fans of one another. Yeah, I think they hate each other. So this this could be fun. And then lastly, coming out in February on the 18th is Never Planned On You by Lindsay Hameroff. What is this about? It's a second chance romance that reminds us true love is sometimes the one thing you never planned on. So she basically needs to plan a wedding and the man she used to love 
is now the groom and that's a very tricky situation if you ask me. I'm curious how that's gonna play out actually. Ah, sticky situation. Oh, don't like it. Ooh. Okay, moving on to March. We're almost halfway. That's actually not true. We still have four months to go, but okay. Moving on to March. We have Wild Side by Elsie Silver. This is a series completely about single dads. I haven't read any books of the Rose Hill series yet, but I really, really enjoy the first few books in the Chestnut Springs series that she also wrote. And Elsie Silver is just a very well-loved author for a lot of people. So I thought this would be a good place to put her in this list. Yeah, March is a very interesting month. We don't have a ton of releases that I have on my list here, but really good ones. We also have Story of My Life coming out by Lucy Score on the 11th. The story of my life. So we are following here a romance novelist and a breakup forces her into writer's block. So apparently the vibe in this book is supposed to give off Gilmore Girls. I recently discovered Gilmore Girls and I'm completely obsessed. So I feel like this could be very, very fun to read. So the author is basically trying to gather insights or inspiration, so to say, for a new romance novel. And when she bumps into a man that she finds very interesting, she thinks he could be the research target in that case. And she also needs her house to be fixed up. So she's gonna hire two people, like him and the brother, to fix up her house. So this is, I think, a small town romance. And it sounds very, very cute. I'm saying that a lot today. It sounds cute, it sounds interesting, but it's true. <laughs> The next one, I've been excited about this since I've heard it's gonna come out, as many other people apparently, is The Hunger Games Sunrise on the Reaping coming out on the 18th of March by Susan Collins. So I read the entire Hunger Games series, I made a reading vlog on that one, gonna link it somewhere here. And Sunrise on the Reaping is the one about the quarter cow. So a lot of people say that this is Hamish's book and I'm very curious about that. Yeah, it's the 50th annual Hunger Games. I'm done. I'm done. I'm so curious as to what's gonna happen there. The movies are so good. The newest movie was also really good. I'm really intrigued in this. Then the last release from this month is Summer in the City by Alex Astor coming out on the 25th of March. This is a New York City... I mean, we can see it with the apple heart in the background. New York City love story and Alex Astor wrote Light Lark, the entire series. And it sounds really, really cute. So for me, to be honest, I don't even need to know what it's about. I just see New York love story and I buy it. Simple as that. <laughs> and apparently we're following a screenwriter here as well. So she needs to develop a screenplay for an upcoming movie. And she is on a deadline and she has writer's block. And we also have a sexy tech CEO. And it's a lovers to enemies and back to lovers storyline which i think is interesting because yeah i mean it makes sense it's like a second chance then it's giving kind of anyone but you you know like lovers enemies lovers i'm curious about that moving on to april and april i'm so excited about i cannot even wait for april you know let it be april right now on april 1st every Jimenez is gonna come out with a new book which is called say you will remember me for me, by now, Abby Jimenez is an autobi author. I loved her latest release just for the summer and I feel like her writing style is really, really magical. Let's not read the premise. I mean, for me, last time I was like, okay, it sounded interesting, the premise, but it wasn't as groundbreaking, but I feel like her writing style is what makes it special, so I'm not gonna read the premise to you or to myself. We're just all gonna buy it and collectively read it, yeah? Maybe we should create a book club or something, that would be fun. <laughs> I'm gonna stop gushing now, I'm, I'm talking way too much. Okay, also coming out on the 1st of April is Where Shadows Meet by Petrus Caldwell, or Patrice, which is a romantic debut vampire fantasy. And that questions what it truly means to sacrifice for love. If you're into vampires, maybe this is for you. I realized recently I'm not that much into vampires, so I don't know if I will pick this one up, but it still sounded interesting, so I just put it in here. Lastly, coming out on the first, we have Crash Landing, which is a also a debut romance, so maybe we can support some new debut authors right here, which forces two exes to reunite when a plane crash leaves them stranded on a deserted island. This sounds like a very good movie, you know? I've I've seen movies like this before. For me personally, my biggest fear is like, not a biggest fear, but one of my fears, <laughs> I have a lot of them, is yeah, a plane crashing down when I'm in it. Oh, terrible, terrible, just horrible. But still it sounds like a interesting premise. Being stranded with a man that you used to hate and then you're gonna fall in love again because you need to survive. I don't know. For me, what's off-putting though is that the cover looks so lovey-dovey and paradise-ish. Like, you just survived a plane crash. 
Why are you looking so cute and happy? Like, it's not that fun, I think. But okay, I want to see what this is about. Then on the 8th, which I think a lot of people are waiting for, and including me, <laughs> is the third and final installment of the Powerless Trilogy. Trilogy, wow, that's a difficult word. Called Fearless by Lauren Roberts. I read the first two and I also read the novella called Powerful. I really enjoyed Power less and I also enjoyed Powerful. Reckless wasn't so my vibe but I'm still excited to wrap up the series and see how it's gonna finish up. So yeah if you loved the first two to set yourself a reminder on the 8th is gonna come out or pre-order it now. Then Beth O'Leary is coming out with a new book. She wrote the flat share and the wake-up call so maybe you've heard of her before. And the new book of hers is called Swept Away and it sounds very interesting as well because it's about a one-night stand. They're having the one-night stand on a boat or a yacht and they're swept away at sea because they got lost in the middle of the ocean. I mean, with a person that you thought you would just spend one night with, suddenly they need to survive and spend the rest of God knows how long together. I think that's really creative. A creative idea to come up with and I appreciate that and I want to read it. <laughs> Tahera Murphy is also coming out with a new book on the 15th of April, so she's gonna extend her entire Shatter Me saga, I would say, with a new spin-off series called The New Republic, because the book is called Watch Me. So this is 10 years after the happenings of the first trilogy, like the initial trilogy. We're following James Anderson, yeah, which is the younger brother of Aaron Warner. And I think it's also with a bit of romance. Yeah, of course. I don't know, like I haven't finished the entire series yet. I watched, I watched, I read the first Shadow Me trilogy, like the initial three books in the series. And that's how far I've got so far. Let me know if it's worth it to continue actually, because I have the fourth one at home. I just don't remember much. Probably if it's a spin-off, I think it's better for you to have read the series beforehand. But yeah, if you've done that, I think it's very interesting for you. Okay, what's confusing to me, I'm gonna move it again. <laughs> I'm gonna put it over here because at first it said that on the 22nd of April this book would come out, now it says it's the 2nd of May. I'm gonna double check that again, but we're gonna talk about it now regardless, is Great Big Beautiful Life by Emily Henry. It sounds so weird, right? Great Big Beautiful Life. This is just such a long title that I wasn't expecting at all, but let's see what it is about. Two writers are competing for the chance to tell the larger-than-life story of an heiress with more than a few plot twists are perceived in this dazzling and sweeping new novel. So it's like a competition that the two of them go through. And it's becoming abundantly clear that their story, just like the tale Margaret Spinning, could be a mystery, tragedy or love ballad, depending on who's telling it. It sounds good. For me, Emily Henry is also an autobiographer author, so... It's not even a question anymore at this point, but the title threw me off a little. I'm gonna be completely honest with you. This was not expected at all. My confusion is increasing because I'm clicking on the next book, which was supposed to come out on the 24th of April. Now it says it's coming out on the 20th of May, so we're just mixing everything up at this point. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. It's Rewinded Back by Liz Tom Ford, which is the fifth book in the Windy City series. And finally, someone listened to my prayers. We're getting Rio's book. I'm very excited about that. I still have two more books left to read. Caught up and... What was the fourth one called? Play Along. Play Along. I still need to read those. There's a sports romance. Don't know, but Rio is a very fun and interesting character. So I cannot wait to read that. Let's move on to May. On the 6th of May, we have One Golden Summer by Carly Fortune. Her covers all look the same at this point. Like to me, I look at the cover and I'm like, ah oh, yeah. It's her. And it's again about a lake and I think this is like a cute uh, or maybe a heartfelt but still a summer book for sure. I'm switching to my phone now so it's actually easier to look at you more. <laughs> I think it's like a young adult book but it looks interesting and if you enjoy Carly Fortune's writing style this one is for you. Then we have coming out on the 6th as well is What Happens in Amsterdam. Fun fact, I or not fun fact, it's just a fact, I live in the Netherlands and for me I've not read a book set in Amsterdam before, so that was really fun, which is why I put it on this list, actually. It says, falling in love with your husband is anything but convenient. In the steamy romance from the New York Times bestselling author of Business or Pleasure. Oh, it's her! Okay, but why, why, why can she not love her husband, huh? I'm confused. <gasps> she crashes her bike into her high school ex-boyfriend. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Wouter van Leuven, or was a Dutch exchange student Danny's family hosted. Sorry, I'm not Dutch, I'm German, but <laughs> it's just funny. <laughs> I just find it curious. Like, I'm just interested. 
Oh, so it's a marriage of convenience because she needs a visa and he needs to be married as well. So they just marry each other. Okay, I'm not against this. I'm interested. Kennedy Ryan is also coming out with a new book on the 13th called Can't Get Enough, which is also part of the Skyland series. Kennedy Ryan is a very heartfelt author and a very popular author as well. So if you're curious about that, you know that she's coming out with a new book in the series. Catherine Center is also coming out with a new book. So exciting. April and May are always the months where the most stuff is happening. The Love Haters is gonna come out on the 20th. Catherine Center is a rom-con author. Rom-con? Rom-com. Rom wow, that was difficult to say. Well, it sounds interesting. She's gonna learn how to swim. I don't know, that's just what I gathered from this. I don't want to know too much because if she doesn't learn how to swim, I think she's gonna get laid off her job. Maybe this is completely wrong what I'm saying, but if you like Catherine Center, you can look forward to something. Then we have A Fate, Forged in Fire coming out on the 27th. We have actually three books coming out on the 27th. So this is a first installment in a new fantasy series as well. I'm gonna read it to you. It's a long one though. To become the first queen in centuries, a powerfully blessed blacksmith must use her wits and fire magic to overthrow the corrupt powers ruling her kingdom, while also fighting her growing desire for one of her dragon-riding adversaries. Okay, so it's Celtic inspired and it's a duology, so that's already good. We don't have a long series that we need to get through and not a long time we need to wait for the second book, hopefully. Yeah, it sounds interesting because it's about dragons, so we're all into dragons recently, I guess. So this might be for you as well. Everything might be for you. I'm gonna stop saying that. You know that already by now. We have now Beautiful Venom, which is a new book by Rainer Kent, Rina Kent, and this is the first installment in the Vipers series. I have no clue what it is about, but if you're into the Rhinoverse or anything she wrote before, yeah, which is the Rhino verse. Wow. You can be excited. I don't... I have no clue what this is about, but yeah. And lastly, also on the 27th, is It's a Love Story. Also coming out on the 27th, which is the last book for May, is It's a Love Story by Annabelle Monaghan. So she wrote Nora Goes of Script and not the same time next... Yeah, same time next summer. Yeah, it's about true love and if it's a lie or not. Going into June, which is the last month we're gonna cover today. This is Video is already lengthy enough. <laughs> First up we have Atmosphere coming out on the 3rd. Very intrigued about this because it's by Taylor Jenkins Reid because it's about the space shuttle program. So actually they're going into space with NASA. It sounds very interesting. I mean Taylor Jenkins Reid always finds the most interesting topics from the past and makes them like kind of approachable for us in these times. It gives a certain vibe to it, not gonna lie. Coming out on the 6th is Air of Storms by Lauren Hamilton Murray, which is the first book in the Stormweaver series. And it says, which is why I was intrigued by it, Red Queen meets Shadow and Bone in this explosive start to a young adult romantic trilogy about dangerous magic, forbidden love, and a cutthroat competition for the throne in an empire where crowns are not inherited, they are won. Sounds amazing to me. Sign me up. I'm down for this. I don't see a cover yet on Goodreads though, so... I'm still gonna wait for that, but I'm interested. Ashley Posen is also gonna come out with a new book next year on the 17th called Sounds Like Love. So this is about a hit-making songwriter and a bitter musician. And they share a startling and explicable connection that they will do anything to shake in this next sparkling magical book from Ashley Posen. So she usually writes magical realism, yeah, magical realism, which is fantastical elements in a real life world. I read last year The Seven Year Slip, loved it. Right now I'm reading a novel love story, which I'm mm, I'm okay with it. And I also DNF The Dead Romantics. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna pick this up or not. I'm gonna see how much I like a novel love story once I finish it and then we can continue talking about it. <laughs> Molly Morris, which I also don't know, is coming out with a new book called Rewind to Us, also on the 17th. And this one, Sort of very fun. Our FMC wants to tell our MMC that she's in love with him and they used to be best friends or they are best friends. But he suddenly is kissing someone else. Uh oh oh. But she and her family, like from our FMC, her entire family has the power to rewind once in their lives to go back to a moment they want to change. So she's like, does she want to change a moment that could have affected these dominoes? start to fall into place or does she want to redo another moment because there are a lot of other 
very difficult things happening in her family at the moment. So it basically says in the last sentence, is the damage already done or can she turn back the clock and give them one more chance? Very interesting premise. Yeah, I've never read a book like this. I don't think I've watched a movie like this either actually. So this is something new, something original and I like it. Then the last book for today is Embrace the Serpent coming out on the 24th by Sonia Mara. Beautiful cover. Wow. It's also a romantic fantasy. <laughs> Who's surprised? A dangerous deal binds a young jeweler's apprentice to the mysterious Serpent King in a marriage of convenience, thrusting her into a deadly game between the cunning, fearsome ruler and his rebellious huntsman. Okay, it's also for fans of Once Upon a Broken Heart, so it's maybe a bit magical. And yeah, marriage of convenience. And I think it's a love triangle as well. I don't know. I'm very curious about all of these books. They all sound very, very, very good to me. Let me know in the comments down below, as I already said, which one was most intriguing to you. And if you also want to see, of course, another video like this in the future, then I will make that for you. And yeah, that was everything for today. Thank you so, so, so much for watching. This was a very, very long video. So thank you. I love you with all my heart. <laughs> me doing the heart, heart sign. I'm sorry. Okay, never mind. Have a beautiful and blissful day and I'm gonna see you tomorrow. Bye!